Coming up next, on the spot, prepare to die, because we've got Dark Souls in the house. If you prefer guns to swords, we've also got you covered with demos of Rage, the House of the Dead Overkill Extended Cut, and even some iPad shooting love with Shadowgun. But wait, there's more! We've got a starting block for Battlefield 3, an update on digital downloads, and a look at NBA Jam on Fire Edition. We're live and on the spot. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you're staying up late in Norway or just going to work in Sydney, we are live and on the spot. Thank you for joining us here in the GameSpot studios. I'm your host, Chris Waters, and I'm joined to kick off the show by Kevin Van Ord, a man who has been fraught with uh, this intense game he's been playing the past few weeks. Kevin, it's Dark Souls time. It is Dark Souls, but can I clarify that there are probably some people that are going to work in Norway right now. Not right, yeah. everybody works. That's very true. You know, your shift. It's I, not you, all Chris's world. That's fair. I was assuming sort of an, a normal diurnal schedule. Of course. But not all humans uh, uh, live that way. Go to your dictionary and look that one up. Yes. No, I mean, you know, open up a new tab. Kevin. Absolutely. Uh, if, so if folks have been following you on Twitter, your fiddle cub, uh, or yeah. on Fuse or anything like that, yeah. they've been seeing an abundance of Dark Souls venting. Venting, yes. You've been um, you've been struggling. This is a tough game, but it's it just got a hold on you. It's venting, and it's also you know celebration. Oh, yeah. A lot of celebration. Um, this is, I mean, Demon Souls took took me over, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like it was every waking moment I was thinking about Demon Souls while I was playing it, and this is no exception. Even more so, you know, you play Dark Souls, and it just it invades you, and it's oh. invaded me. I, um, an appropriate word, yes, as, as uh, you folks may find out. Now, we're going to show, show off a little bit of Dark Souls here. Kevin's got his... Um, what? So, I would describe <laughs> your, your character as, like, maybe he looks like a ring wraith. Yeah. Or I, like or, the, the ghost of Christmas future in the Muppet Christmas Carol. Yeah, that's why I called my character Muppet, actually. Yeah, it's fitting. Yeah, but so, yeah, it's here's an interesting thing. Like, I've had lots of different robes and things like that. Um, but uh, this guy, I've I've sort of picked up on this gold uh, gold threaded robe that I like so much. It's uh -huh. just it's got good protection, and I get, I still get good mobility with it. Um, and I can I can bash things, and I can cast spells, and everything just fits really well. But I can I'll definitely show off some um, some other stuff shortly. Some other. Uh, some other outfits. Cool. If people want to see see some looks. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Dark Souls, uh, Kevin mentioned a game called Demon Souls, GameSpot's 2009 Game of the Year. Oh yes. Uh, Dark Souls is a spiritual successor. It's not a sequel, but it's it it takes from Demon Souls what the 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 difficulty, the precision of combat. The difficulty, precision yeah. of combat. Um, you know, hideous monsters, um, all sorts of stuff like that. A foreboding atmosphere. Some Absolutely. skeletons waiting to uh, just, you know, maul you, but... I wasn't wow, expecting you, these guys, because usually they're in a different spot, but you, they followed me when I went down the elevator. Oh. And, uh, yeah, and it also brings the online features as well. So here you see somebody has dropped a note, mm -hmm. and uh, it says shortcut ahead. Now, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. That's the reason why I came up here. I started in the area where you start the main game. Yes, Firelink um, which Shrine. Which is Firelink Shrine. And, um, but that shortcut that I just went up isn't open when you first get there. And there's an interesting thing about the shortcuts here. Um, the shortcuts aren't, don't really geographically connect things in the way you do. This area is actually a bit of a distance from, from Firelink Shrine. Yeah. And the way this elevator is set up over here, you'd think that I am now directly above where that elevator started, right? You know, like elevators work? Yes. But actually, that's not what it does at all. It seems like you're going up an elevator, but it's really more of a quick travel option. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's you know, uh, Carolyn Pettit um, suggested that it's sort of like an MC Escher um, kind of design. Yeah, because it's... things can't really connect that way. It's an impossible space. Exactly. You know, it can't... That elevator doesn't just go straight up and take you there. But in Dark Souls, it does. And that's one of the very key things here in this game because... In Demon's Souls, you had sort of these these individual worlds that were connected via this hub that you would warp to and from. Right. But in Dark Souls, it's all contiguous. Absolutely. It's all connected. And so if you were to venture, you know, far, far out, even to here, you're a good 10-minute walk from the Firelink Shrine. Mm-hmm. But with that elevator, boom, you're there. It's right there. And at first, 
You know, it's it's the illusion is so convincing that you may not even notice at first that it's an illusion. Mm -hmm. But uh, and no. because you know it's a winding, you've been winding a little bit. But then when you think about it, you add it up. Because I got to that elevator, I've been playing this a bit myself, and I got to that elevator. That was that's where I stopped, and it took me back to the shrine, and I was shocked. At first I was like, is this place really above is this exactly place? Happening? And then I realized that, that no. Um, and just to stop up, you know, a, another thing that's different about Dark Souls over Demon Souls is that this is a contiguous world, whereas yeah. Demon Souls was, was a hub that, that had its levels connected to it through the hub. This is all one contiguous world that you pass through freely. You can't go everywhere when you first start, you have to beat bosses. Oh, and here's, you, you, if hopefully you can see this at home, this is, uh, you see a little pl a ghost there. He's that just disappeared. disappeared out of yeah. my, my view. Um, but that's another player playing the game. Who was that ghost? Yeah, that's another player. We don't share the same world in this case, um, but you see other people in their worlds. Do um, going about their thing, you know, fighting enemies that aren't there in your world, but maybe, you know, just sort of, it contributes to this, uh, this sense that there are other people that are, they're like in the struggle with you, even though they're not helping you. Exactly. It's a silent camaraderie mm -hmm. that, that comes out of that um, little message. And this this mentions imminent, imminent charmer. charmer. There's a blacksmith a blacksmith down here. Okay. Um, so this is where you would go to uh, upgrade your your weapons and and so on and so forth. Now, a lot of people talk about these games, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, as being very hard. You don't necessarily see the challenge here because I'm in some relatively early areas. Um, You've gone back to those early areas, and you're like way more powerful than. Yeah. So these were this. these were tough dudes when I first started this game. Yeah. Now here's something that I don't know if it has been shown off, um, and this is um, this is um, Sen's fortress. Um, it'll announce itself momentarily, and I've I've left this note here to be oh, to be wary of the switch, and the reason. Is now the first time you see this, you don't know. You just kind of walk up and go over top this this plate here, uh -huh. and then you get shot by arrows. Oh, so now that I know, yeah. I also know that there are lizard dudes up here. Lizard so dudes. Here's something that sometimes I can pull off, which is walk over the switch. Oh and yeah, then and watch that the lizard trap dude just took an arrow him. to the back. Right. Oh. Now, I see by lizard dude, you mean a horrible snake-headed monster yes. man. Yes. Now there's my melee combat I can use, but you know, this time I think I'm going to use a nice fire. Now folks, if you have comments on these horrible lizard men that Kevin is fighting or questions about Dark Souls, I, you may not have seen a computer with me, but we are taking questions through chat. We've got a system set up, so if you're in the chat room, jump in there. Ask some questions, you know, comment, let us know what you think, you know, what you think of what's going on, what you want to see, or if you have any questions about Dark Souls, and we'll be happy to answer them. Yeah. Now, I did want to show off that enemy because I think that's just a cool looking enemy, those lizard dudes. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I also wanted to show off the fortune. I'm a little far from the TV, which is kind of dark, so hopefully I won't make any mistakes through here. This is an easy place to make mistakes. Um, this fortress is all about traps. All right, so when you first come in here, chances are you're going to die. Um, by one of many traps that you don't see coming out. Here's, okay, we got here's a good example. You've got some uh, the swinging pendulum blades. Exactly. So get through here, and then I'm going to be shot by lightning from above. Yep. Ooh. And now, but if you weren't here's... quick with that, then you would get zapped. Here's new lizard. Whoa! 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 whoa, whoa. Are you going to fall to your death? No, no it's cool. I lived. Oh, you're. But hurting. now I'm in trouble. See, this is what I did not want to have happen on the show. Things don't always go your way in Dark Souls, even when you've been playing for tens and tens of hours. Exactly. So now everybody's gonna see me die. I wanted to do a backstab with this dude. Let's see if I can get around and do a backstab. Oh yeah. Boom. Boom. See, now I gotta be careful because I've got three lightning guys. Oh, one of them fell. You're That's moving kind of good. slowly. It's because I'm in tar. This whole oh, floor yeah. You is can see it shining tar. there. You can see his footprints. Yep. And so now I've got two lightning spewing lizards up above me. Oh, and he tagged you with the so lightning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to run. Now see around this corner, this is not a place you wanna be, right? Okay. And I'm I about mean, to show you why. Most of these places aren't places you wanna be. No, but, but specifically. This is the reason why this is a place you don't wanna be. That, because these dudes are really hard. 
And what I'm going to do, this is a good chance for me to, to turn, to get some different equipment on, I think. Okay. Um, maybe. All right. Wait, what got, do you think? Should got, I put on the Silver Knight helm? You like you like that idea? Oh uh, yeah, that I looks have, cool. Or I have black armor. No, let's go silver. Let's I want to be able to see you armor. standing out against the black background, hopefully. Oh, there you go. Oh, uh, we got a question in the chat room. Is there a dragon nearby Kevin can fight? There's, there's not. He's um, in the, the pits of the Sen's I fortress. Could, I don't know if dragons lurk there. No, I could go to, uh, it's, it's probably too late for me to really get over. Um, did I put the right leggings on? I don't know if I can. Uh, it's a little late for you to wonder about that because yeah. lightning statue man has awoken. What? Does he only have one leg? I can't see. Can we get a view of this guy? Who has no head, but an arm and like a tail and totally just one leg. Now this is something you also have talked about, or, you know, we're, besides the, you know, the general curses and fretting and whatnot that comes with playing Demon Souls, is the, uh, what I hear from you a lot is like, oh, that enemy just looks really nasty whenever you see someone new. There's a delight because the monsters in this game are so creative. I think, I think these are some of the best looking monsters you'll ever see in any game. Now you're able to, to take these hits off your shield but someone without as much stamina, that's that green bar you see refilling, Is going to have a hard time down here. And part of the reason is because... Okay. Oh, your lightning friend came down to join you. No, I think there's another one of these dudes. Oh, there totally too. is. <laughs> so this is probably going to be me dying very shortly. Oh, he's got behind you. Oh. And there I go. You so yeah, die. this is why I didn't want to fall off there, which is almost something I never have happen. Um, usually when I go down there, I do it purposefully because I want to go after one of those dudes. I'll try to get through quicker because I wanted, I wanted to get to the top of the fortress. Let's see if I have time to get to the top of the fortress. That'd be tough. I don't know. Yeah. See if you can make it there. Uh, we've got a question coming in about messages. Yeah. Right? Totally. So we saw one before. It was, you know, it said charmer ahead. Uh, does that, and does that ruin the surprise? Does that, no. does that ever, are you like, oh, spoiler, thanks, dude. No, um, it's actually the opposite. The, the, the whole reason it's put together this way is, is, is Dark Souls is extremely hard. It's very much like Demon's Souls in that regard, right? Uh -huh. So the, the reason this is built in is it's sort of your, your help system. Every player is sort of a guide mm -hmm. for every other player to kind of help each other through this really awful, terrifying place. And, and so that's what these things are there for, is really to uh, give you a hand. You, I mean, nobody can, you know, say something specific, you know. You, because you can't just write anything you want, folks. You choose from a set of available messages to post down. Exactly. Like, you can't en enter text here. You are just choosing pre-set messages. Yeah, nobody can say, hey, this exact thing is right up ahead. That charmer message, it didn't even say there was a blacksmith in it. But even if yeah. it did, I'd know. <laughs> I, you can hear sure, him. Sure, you can hear him. You know, oh, look at you dragging out. your friends. I'm, I'm dragging my friends around. Uh, and so here, but here's another thing. You said every, you know, every message is, you know, a little bit of help. Right. That's totally. not true, because you that, totally have people is... who write messages <laughs> intended to, intending to mess with you. Like, I think there's, I saw one in someone's game that was, it was near a ledge, and it just said. Run Jump straight there. ahead, yeah. or something like that. And if you do it, you fall to your death. But those messages disappear pretty quickly. Because what determines whether a message stays or not? Um, whether or not somebody rates it. If somebody doesn't rate your message, um, then um, it will disappear. Now what, like if someone does rate your message, is there an incentive? In Demon Souls, I remember you, could, you would get like a couple souls if someone rated your message positively is there an incentive here yeah, well it's just, it's the same thing i think you get a little i think you get a little health boost mm -hmm. um, here's here's part of the thing is that there aren't a whole lot of people playing right now because the game's pre-released sure and so there are some mysteries that i'm hoping to clear up over the weekend but as far as i know the system there is exactly as it was in demon souls okay so not not that i want to keep comparing the two to demon souls here's another spot that's that's a little bit fun it's a familiar touch point because, uh, and I, can't, I wish I could see better, but uh, there's a lightning spewing dude down there across from um, the blades. So you have to make it through the swinging blades, avoid the lightning. Uh, oh God. Oh, Kevin, you're making me nervous. This kind of game you totally get. Now here's another switch that Ooh. I can use. Nice. To totally um, destroy it, that didn't guy. Work. Oh, he's still there. Yeah. yeah. But he's gonna try to come in. Come in here, I wanna do a backstab on you. This or guy, do you just wanna knock not. him off the ledge? Yeah. See ya. Bye. 
It's it's kind of fun too because sometimes enemies will will leap off ledges when they try to leap away from you and stuff. <laughs> it's a great way um, to kill a dude. Now here's an interesting thing. Come on, got more more about traps. Yeah. The, the sound design is is important here, and I can't hear what's going on. Ooh. Um, but there you go. Did you see that? Yeah, that was um, a giant boulder. A giant boulder just went past me. Um, and now you're running to exactly where it came from. Oops, I, I missed the doorway, but I somehow managed to win. Now, you got it. Yeah, you got clear here's, enough. Here's another fun thing is I can try to lure the dude up there to come down and get in front of the boulder and have the boulder kill him for me. Come on. Come on down. And that's that satisfaction down. where you just see, like, the, you just see the souls added to your tally. Yeah. If he dies. Come on. Damn it. Uh oh. Usually he comes right on down. There, there we he go. is. Oh, he made oh, it. Yeah. Now you got to fight. That's all right. Four armed. These cobra guys head are man. these. Right for me, these guys are five swings without too much trouble. But if you're not Ball careful, I'll say, jeez, you just wailed that thing to death. But if you're not careful, they'll jump right into you. Now there's another switch here. Did you put that run, message down? Jump. No, nope, that wasn't a message. Oh, Oops. didn't quite make it. Okay. And I missed. Switch. That's all right. Okay. Ah. I'm gonna oh, try to. Okay. Uh, I just want to do another backstab because they look cool. They do look cool. And what else is really nice, and you may have noticed this when you did the backstab before, folks, you're invulnerable during a backstab, right? So yeah. an enemy attacks you. You can do a backstab in the middle of a fight safe, relatively safely if you can manage to maneuver around your opponent. Exactly. Another uh, wary of trap. Now, the boulder's going to cut. Oops, see, there it goes. Wow. I've gotten so used to this. You just got the timing right down. Yeah, but you got to be careful. You can't actually touch that boulder at all, even from behind. Because it'll hurt. So, yeah, it'll still it'll still hurt you as if it rolled over you. All right, Kevin. Well, our our time here with Dark Souls is coming to a close. No, that can't possibly be right. I know. I want to get on the elevator. Oh, oh, I just missed it. There it goes. <laughs> you missed the elevator. Uh, I guess while you're waiting for the next one to come in, anything else we want to mention about Dark Souls? Reviews in progress. Review in progress online? should be up Monday morning. Okay. Um, and the game comes out Tuesday. Game comes out Tuesday, October fourth. Um, I don't want to give too much away. I don't want to like be, you know, spoil any pre-review excitement. Okay. But I want to say at least, hey, this game's good. It, hey. Yeah. It's good. Check yeah. it out. Well, Find thanks out for coming good. by, showing it off, and even managing to die horribly. I did in die a pit horribly with some horrible monsters. Absolutely. It's the Dark Souls experience. It's what I do. All right, folks. Up next, it's the news. What's new this week? Uh, Tom Magrino is going to tell us. Tom. Welcome to your GameSpot news update for Thursday, September 29th. Tom Agrino is on vacation, which means you're stuck with me. Let's do this. In a surprising turn today, I Am Alive isn't dead after all. Ubisoft has confirmed that its Shanghai Studios survival action game will make its debut as a downloadable game for PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade this winter. The game was first announced at E3 2008, but almost every time Ubisoft has mentioned it since, it was only to announce a delay. The veil of secrecy is finally lifted a little, as the publisher released the first gameplay trailer of I Am Alive today, which only raises more questions. For example, why is there a Kinect logo at the end of the clip? In other news, it was a big week for game makers trash-talking their own work. Square Enix CEO Yoichi Wada told investors that the Final Fantasy brand was greatly damaged because of the massively multiplayer online abomination that is Final Fantasy XIV Online. However, Wada did say the company was determined to keep revamping the game until it was actually good, which basically amounts to fully redoing the game. Also, Battlefield 3 executive producer Patrick Bach told the Wall Street Journal that he is deeply critical of his games after they're finished, because he focuses on all the things that should have been done better. In particular, he can't even start up a game of Battlefield Bad Company 2 anymore, saying he's just ashamed and can only see the things that need improvement in the game. Anyway, that does it for today. For more on those stories and other news headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. Sources tell me that was actually Brendan Sinclair, not Tom Magrino. I'll have to corroborate that after the show. But for now, a dude who I definitely know is Maxwell McGee, sitting right over here on the couch. It's easy to get those news guys mixed up. They all look the same. Maxwell, uh, welcome to Thank the set. You. Thank you. I, this is my first time on the big red sofa. I gotta say, very spongy. Yeah, I like it. Do you? It's not. You're not like lacking support. No, no. It's more. got good back support, but it's got very spongy. We'll say, took us support. Delightful. 
So I, I hear we're going to play some Rage. Maxwell, we're playing Rage. More specifically, I'm going to play you're Rage. You're going to play some Rage. And you're going to like check hang it out. out and watch because this game, this game is pretty. So yeah, check it out, folks. Here I am. This is Rage. I am in Wellspring, mm. which is a town. This uh, is one of like one of the early towns, right? Yeah, uh, and for some reason there's like weird also, music there's, coming there's out. Also, party music coming out of our speaker. Of but the whatever. speakers, which, you know, We're hopefully well someone backstage well will help us with. Wellspring's a party. This is Wellspring. And it's open for business. And uh, I, before I head out into the wasteland, I'm going to talk to one of our like little friendly NPCs here. All right. Uh, I'm going to go into the bar. The bouncer is asleep. <laughs> Naturally. And I'm going to talk to the bartender. What's up, lady? Let me give you some advice. Your reputation is everything here. If people don't know you, they don't like you. And you gotta earn their respect. Best way to do that is by making the road safer. Simply stated, destroying bandits. Makes people like you and brings business into my little bar. Sounds good, so Sally. Deal with you. All right, Every she's gonna talk a little bit. She's giving me a sweet destroying offer. Destroying bandits, um, um, that little, seems to be a recurring like theme in a wasteland-oriented video game. You know, it, bandits, they always get a bad rap. You know, that's because they do bad stuff. Bad. All right, these people, they exist to rob, yep. steal, and murder yep. uh, other people but who are, are trying sure to live their it, life. Are you sure you're not just being closed-minded? Maybe, the, I mean, their culture is obviously different they than ours. They make their living off of the misery of everyone else. Well. You know? Okay, so. Sometimes other people are jerks. We're going out into the wasteland. And those other people are called bandits. Oh, ah, Okay, <laughs> no, gotcha. you got me. You got me. Folks, uh, we are s still monitoring the chat room, so if you got any questions about Rage, feel free to sound off in there. Just join in, and uh, we'll, they will be relayed to us. Rage is a first-person shooter, which we'll be yes. getting to the shooting part in a little bit. Right now, I'm going to hop out into the wasteland and drive. Basically, the premise is uh, Earth gets hit by an asteroid. As Earth is wont to do. i got to say, I've played Fallout 3. Yeah. This looks like Fallout 3. It's got guns what? and this brown look like and Fallout wastelands 3. and stuff. So how, how is this different? Why should I care? This looks like Fallout. This, first of all, it's way more colorful than Fallout 3. <laughs> and... Hey, vehicle combat mission. Yeah, important. we're going to do some vehicle combat. So when you're in a vehicle, you kind of auto-lock. And I've got my mini guns here. Cool. And also ram you dudes. You can also go up to ram Which is speed. really fun. I'm going to try to ram that guy and make him die. So we'll e brake turn. Oh, we do a little e yeah. brake snap around there. Come here! Blinking. Oh, Blinking. Blinking. Oh, oh. Missed. All right, gun shooting. <laughs> okay, that's effective. I've been missing my charge for a while. You're going to the tree, but that is a different one. Come here, come here. Get him. Get him. Oh, I feel good for that guy. So can you, like, can you tweak your vehicle at all? Upgrade? Yeah, like, yeah, weapons, yeah. So the way stuff. you upgrade a vehicle, I'm going to run through this real quick, because that's a turret that shoots me. Boosh. And also... Oh. Don't worry, your vehicle writes itself. All right, I'm going to get like my little friend here. Car. So your vehicle, you can use these items. This is a little turret yeah. that, when I get close to these guys, will oh, he's your little buddy. Will shoot them and destroy them. Good Come on, bandit. You're going to die. So ve vehicle travel is, you know, how you get from place to place here. Um, and but uh, up upgrading, upgrading. Upgrading, yes. All right, so this is my dune buggy. I started out, all I had was an ATV. Yeah. Uh, where am I going now? Okay. All I have is an ATV. This is my dune buggy. I can, you earn, the credits you use to upgrade, you earn by racing or by killing bandits for Sally. Mm -hmm. And then you can upgrade the wheels so that they have better grip, so that they have spikes on the side. You can upgrade the engine. You can upgrade the uh, armor plating so you take less damage. Can I get those speed racer like bumper pads that shoot out the, the bottom of your vehicle and pop you up in the air? Uh, you know, I did encounter a, like an air boost yeah. jump kind of thing okay. in the multiplayer. Oh, right. It's got vehicle-based competitive multiplayer. Yes. The only competitive multiplayer Rage has is four-player vehicular combat. Uh, so you drive around. Some of them are like checkpoint races, mm -hmm. um, and others are... Bam. I, I all right. I got to switch my, uh, bits. my thing up here. You've all, but there's also a cooperative multiplayer as well. There is. Uh, missing person is which what I want to do. Yeah, cooperative There's multiplayer. Cooperative is multiplayer, like... and here are my weapons. And oh, check this out. I'm going to craft something real quick for you just because I can. Uh, so we you, got a message coming in from the chat over you here. You pick up, hold on. I'll oh, be talking okay. crafting no, for oh, a sec. No. I'm going to make a lock grinder. Basically, you, you get these recipes to make stuff. I'll make a wing stick as well. And then uh, you can use those things in your travels. You pick up a lot of stuff. It's kind of like Fallout 3 in that respect. Yeah. Um, get, a lot of, get a lot of trinkets. Yes, From and the wasteland. now we're going to get on foot here and go into the abandoned hideout. Uh, what were you saying about... I was saying, well, now the chat question has changed, and there's a new one coming in. Is it true 
that the Xbox 360 version will be on four freaking discs. Not true. Four discs. No, yeah, not true. the view. Uh, How many discs? Is it just three discs? Just one? Oh, three discs. The third, di as far as I can tell, the third disc is the multiplayer it's content. A lovely view. And uh, the first two discs are the campaign. Can you install the first two discs? Yes, so you can install. Like double up your install. There was much hullabaloo about the hullabaloo. install for Rage because it's 22 gigabytes. Hullabaloo. That's a lot which of is bigger than some my, people's I've hard got drives. One of those like little tiny hard drives. Yeah, yeah I don't even think it, it won't could, fit. No, you can play without installing. It just makes the load times. Okay. From what I can tell so far, it makes the load times any, shorter. Any problems with like texture pop? No, it doesn't seem to be any different. Um, all right, so here I am in this bandit hideout. That looks like a, a, a telltale sign of a bandit hideout. I got a shotgun. I got all cow skulls. I got a whole. I got, a, I got a bunch of different guns here. You have a bunch of different guns. All right, we're gonna go in here. We're in search of a missing person. Now I've been in here before, Let's and just some bandits. I'm gonna, I'm hearing somebody, so I'm gonna go into sneak mode. You can kind of sneak up a little bit. You don't have that many silenced weapons. Obviously, this assault rifle that I have is not silenced. <laughs> just us in the ranks. What are you talking about? It's got that rapid face. But this wing stick is. Oh, what's up? But they saw me, so. What the hell? Wing stick cracked off. Dang it! You horrible monster. Dang it! Oh, that oh, one's stuck in your brain. I can right I'm, gonna, I'm gonna retrieve it. Where? Oh. So see when you pull that weapon oh. out, it's got a little thing that says buckshot down there next to it. I understand this game. You have like different ammo types that you can put in your guns. Yeah. So I think I think maybe my pistol has a different ammo type. No, I don't have them yet. Oh. But yeah. So this is your weapon switch menu. Like yeah. with the right right stick, I choose the weapon, and with the left stick, I choose the uh, munitions. And then I loot the bodies, which I already did. So Chris, another question from the chat that just disappeared, but I committed it to memory. How long is this game supposed to be? You know, I don't know. Is long? it gonna be is it gonna be a hundred million hours? It's no, it's a, I like mean it's a single player sort of story. So like two hundred million campaign. Hours? Actually I'm gonna oh I don't I wouldn't mind dying a little bit because they're just cool like mini game when you die. Oh the heart the like the oh, heart it's, so it's oh. in for mature um, mature audiences. We'll I guess I game. guess some bandits need to get shot over there. Yeah, come on man. I take it back. Enough of your bandit apologies. They also killed that love seat over there. And then you can pick up that kind of stuff. Got some bits, and those are like those are your oh. item crafting bits. I'm gonna let this guy kill me because oh, when you die, it's this. you're you're down but not out. So you do this little defibrillator mini game with the the sticks. So you're like moving the sticks so they line up with the yellow bits there. Yep, and, and then, then punch the triggers. Shock the paddles, and then if anyone's around me, they get shocked, and I can shoot them. So you just send off like an area of effect electric it's shock. It's sort of, yeah, it's like a shock. Okay. I, I was going to say EMP, but I guess mm. EMPs don't usually It would it would, it would ruin all of their wasteland cell phones. Okay. That, if I get hit that. another time, I'm going to actually die. So let's not do that. It will ruin all of their wasteland cell phones. Wasteland From what I can tell, phones. there are no cell phones in the wasteland. They probably get crappy reception anyway. I, Look I, at this old boy. I don't really know who this fella is, but he certainly looks dapper. And he's, has he's much too dapper to be a bandit. Okay, so I guess these were the there. missing persons that I was looking for, so I'm gonna bounce out of this with bandit nest. Because, oh god. Whoa, there's a bandit. Wing stick. Boom. Oh, in the face. look, it's stuck in your head. And then you can pick I'll it take back that. Up. Yeah, something I, we were talking about earlier, I don't think we got to explain fully, was the, uh, the cooperative multiplayer bonus mission. Legends of the Wasteland, that's what those things are called. Yes. And they're like standalone. Oh, what? Oh, come on, oh, getting shot. They're standalone missions. Uh, that you play with a buddy and you know you sort of you get like a kill multiplier mm -hmm, going and mm -hmm. it's actually kind of presented in a neat way like at, at one early point uh one of the characters you meet gives you a sniper rifle and so one of the missions starts off and it says now that wasn't any ordinary sniper rifle what dan had to do had, you know what he had to go through to get that is a whole story entirely <laughs> and so yeah you and to, then you get to play that story. you get to play the story yeah all right, and remember that lock grinder I made earlier? I do. I'm gonna grind this lock. Boom. Bam! That lock got rocked. A little B and E. I'm gonna pick up these Feltrite crystals. You got a, what the heck is a Feltrite crystal? A collector card yeah. for Ghost Pistol. So those are two things that warrant explanation. Feltrite crystals, I'm not exactly sure what their entire significance is. Okay. What I know now they is they're, they're rare okay. and people will pay for them. And they can be used to make assault rifle ammo. Uh, the collector card, there's yeah. like a little card game. Really? Rage. Yeah, you go is to the like, bar. Is it like a Final Fantasy VIII style little card game? Uh, Does it have little monsters and arrows and numbers and it doesn't make any sense? 
it makes sense. It's oh, okay. very clear. It's like uh, it's you know, then. each card can do some damage, or, and they have it has certain health, and mm -hmm. then you line them up in attack, and then there's some stat boosting and whatnot, and it's very simple. Okay. And so you know, it's not you don't play Magic or whatever <laughs> Final Fantasy Eight thing Maxwell was talking about. It's a good way to gamble, get some money, and uh, that that's uh, that's your little taste of rage there, folks. Well, as we're wrapping up here, we got one more question coming down from the chat. Which version you looks tell. better? 360 or PS3? The age-old question. The age-old question. Uh, so far, I've been playing mostly on 360 and a little bit on the PS3. Curtis has been playing on the PS3 for uh, game guide purposes. Mm -hmm. And I would say they are looking pretty comparable thus far. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend a little more time with them, obviously, in advance of the review, which is coming next week, about the same time as Kevin's Dark Souls review, because Rage comes out on Tuesday. Well, there you go. And so early next week, we'll have the video review and the review and... Somewhere in there, you'll be able to know which one looks better, PS3 or Xbox. I do think PS3 only comes on one Blu-ray, though. Oh, really? Yes. Well, there you go. But if same you price. Just can't so. hold all those discs. No, it's pretty. It's pretty neat. Okay. They got the little insert. Oh, they got thing. the little the little flap. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you rage. Okay. Rage is pretty cool. Pretty pretty cool. Oh, thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, all right, Max. Let's move on. Let's get out. You here. stick around because we're going to be doing a demo with you in a in a minute yes, or two. Yes, I'll be right off stage. Right but before here. we get that fired up, it's time to take a look at NBA Jam on Fire Edition because fire and basketball mix. Boom shaka la. Hey everybody, it's Marco Georgievich. We are, you know, sitting at the on-the-spot offices. We are here with Cody Swatsky from EA Canada, producer of NBA Jam on Fire Edition. Cody, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. You know, of course there's all the 30 NBA teams now, but you guys included a boatload of additional teams, bonus teams. Let's kind of show off now to the, the, the audience. Sure. Some of those teams available. Over uh, over 30 unlockable teams here, and uh, kind of cycling through one. What we're really excited about is the Seattle Supersonics. Uh, able to get permission to use them, uh, and it's got the classic lineup of Kemp and Peyton, which is great. Uh, we have the Honey Badgers right over there to the right. Uh, oh, we're going past it right now. That's okay. Uh, but we have the Honey Badgers, who uh, we showed off in a video a little while ago. A um, couple other, you know, internet zeitgeist type guys. Uh, we got Sad Pandas in there as well. Uh, but we're showing off right now is Team EA which is pretty cool, uh, has Isaac from Dead Space and Faith from Mirror's Edge. So over 30 unlockable teams. We got some guys who are special unlockables around the holidays as well. All right, now let's talk about how you unlock teams. You, you know, you were mentioning about the progression. How, how do I have to unlock, you know, to get Team A, to get, you know, to be, you know, if you're a Sonics fan like myself, how to get, how to get them in the game? Uh, great question. So. Every single, every single thing you do in the game is gonna unlock what are called jam bucks. And jam bucks are your XP and your cash. You use them to level up, which is gonna give you access to more and better content, and then you use them to get that content as well. Uh, so by hitting different levels, you're gonna have access to the Sonics or Team EA or some other special teams in there, and then you use those jam bucks to buy them and get access to them in the, in them in the game. Now, jam bucks, do you get them only by winning, or is it even if, I, if I'm horrible at NBA Jam, can I still be able to unlock teams? You, you yeah, absolutely can. Uh, so you get them by winning. Winning, you get them by completing different uh, different challenges as well. So jam challenges will uh, unlock a ton of these things, and you get them for shoving, get them for doing jump shots, get them for blocks. Uh, there's over 25 of them, and that's going to be the real way to get more jam bucks. All right, so now we're watching the screen. We've got, you know, the Sonics are now have blue fire. Let's talk about that. That, <laughs> uh, that is team fire. So that's something brand new we added in this year as well. People remember it from uh, Showtime and Hangtime, but wanted to add it back into the main jam series. And the way you get that is three alley-oops in a row. And the only way it can be broken is for the other team to get an alley-oop. You get 20 seconds of possession time. And uh, it has some pretty strong strategic or implications because you can't, uh, you can't break it with a regular basket. Uh, but it gives you all the advantages of being on fire for both your players. All right, Cody, so what else can play gamers expect when NBA Jam on Fire hits? You know, there isn't just going to be just, you know, standard basketball play. So. No, uh, so our campaign here is called Road Trip, and uh, you're going to be able to play against all 30 NBA teams in whatever order you want. Um, you want to play against the Lakers first, you want to play against the Cavs first, totally up to you. Uh, so we have a few different levels of challenges here. Perfect, uh, let's drop into a division. And you can see right here, uh, we've got all the different teams in division, and you select your challenge by going left to right here at the bottom. Everybody starts out in their bronze, but beating this one, you unlock then the Mavs silver, and then the Mavs gold. And uh, there may or may not be something special that unlocks when you get all the golds in a division. Okay. Um, also, by beating these different uh, different challenges, you're gonna unlock players for that team as well. So. 
it's not all tied to getting the jam bucks, but well, it mostly is. But you also unlock them by doing uh, certain actions as well. Now, can you delve a little deeper into in terms of what kind of games you'll actually be playing? It's not going to be just standard game two v two. Sure, absolutely. Uh, it is on all. It is all two v two. So one of the things we wanted to do for uh, on Fire Edition is make the package a little bit. A little bit more focused, but also a lot deeper. Uh, so last year, you may remember we had the half court games and we had the boss battles. Uh, those don't make a return. Uh, one of the loud messages we got was that people weren't about that. They wanted the two on two gameplay. So we focused on that. We also managed to add in a bunch of tweaks to those games. So okay. you're going to see games called Rain, where threes are going to count for four points, twos are going to count for three, and then regular dunks are only going to count for one point. So we're really focusing on getting the, the you know the the jumpers and outside the arc action happening. Um, we also have another game called Over the Top, where Over the Top Dunks, the big on fire dunks, are worth 10. It creates a lot of tension when you get on fire. You're trying to get there and you know somebody breaks your fire. It's a major setback, but if you get that dunk, you're running away with that game. It, uh, it creates a great push and pull effect. All right, Cody, so what else can you know can gamers expect when NBA Jam on Fire hits? Uh, NBA Jam on Fire Edition is gonna hit uh, XBLA and PSN October 5th, $15 or 1200 Microsoft points, and you know, the amount of uh, the amount of gameplay you're gonna be able to get out of this, it's absolutely insane. So make sure you check it out, download a trial, it's free, and then pick up the game. Nice. Well, once again, it's Cody, thank you so much for coming on today. You know, it's, I'm I'm very eager to get my hands on this game. Like you said, October 5th, it's only a matter of days. So once again, thanks a lot, guys, for paying attention, and uh, thanks for watching. Thanks. Now, as promised, Maxwell has yep. stuck around. I'm still here. But this time, Maxwell, you're taking the you're taking the reins. I'm taking the reins. I'm gonna be the one sitting back doing jack squat. I'm gonna shoot some effing zombies. Effing zombies. Effing. Okay. What's because the game called? Because this is a family friendly show. It's House of the Dead Overkill Extended Cut. Extended. It's the cut. like the special edition, we'll say, of House of the Dead Overkill, which originally came out on the Wii. I think about two years back now. So it came out on the Wii. It's now on the PlayStation mm -hmm. Three. We gotta use the move. We gotta In use the In order to do this, yep. light gun shooter. We need to we need to switch things up around here. Change places. Let's do it. Move set time. Oh Moving yeah, the set. look at that. That's the magic of green screen set. Whoa! Uh, moving this chair out of the way. Sunglasses are coming on. The sunglasses are coming on. Maxwell is going to shoot some effing zombies. I've got what do they call this now? The sharpshooter. Sharp yeah. I was gonna say the blaster. No. I think that's I think that's the pistol actually. The blaster. All right, so here we go. So this is so this is it. This is Papa's the game. Palace of Pain. We're, we're not gonna do Papa's Palace of Pain. We're gonna do I forget what this one's called. Ah yes, Naked, Naked Terror. Terror. So you've got your original seven episodes from House of the Dead Overkill, as well as two new episodes. One of them being Naked Terror. I'm not sure which of the other one is because these are in red and the game refuses to let me click on them. You can't shoot them. You can't shoot them. But shoot we can them. shoot some zombies. Oh, and shoot some Naked other things Terror. to point out. We got some modifiers here if you wanna modify your game. You can extra turn on mutants. extra mutants or you can turn on 3D. This game features two of video games most superfluous features. 3D and motion controls. It's oh, awesome. Oh yeah. So here and we it's go. not even stereoscopic 3D. Oh, no, it's, it's anaglyph. No, it, yep, yeah, it is anaglyph. So which, here we which go. Which is red blue. We're picking out our weapons. We got the magnum, we got the auto shotgun. We can hit up the gun that shop. Looks good. No. Nope. Upgrade all our stuff nope. if we really wanted to, but we're not. Come on. You don't have that kind of scroll. I don't. Go shoot some Saving zombies. Saving player one. I'm going to stick with my shotgun because, hey, it's a zombie game. You got a shotgun. Absolutely. Absolutely. And are we going to get a little, like, grindhouse We are going to get a little, a little gr they have some really terrible acting in this game. So we are going to enjoy it. Let's. All it's worth. So here we go. <laughs> little movie's about to start up here right after the intermission. This is when you go to what? The, this is the drive in theater. Dream magic. Uh, Oh yes, yes, the grindhouse style drive-in movie yep, theater. Yeah, you've got that little raunchy. The little key word there is raunchy. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that what we're in store for here? Uh, you just can see for yourself. The pink pussy cat. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So. And here's Velma guns, or Varla, rather. A voluptuous vixen, vowing violent vengeance. A roll in on her. Papa Caesar, you oh, better right. pray those fucking pigs catch up with you before I do. Don't worry if you don't know what she's talking about because neither does anybody else. Like, yeah. Papa Caesar's a bad guy, basically. Pretty much. Oh, Varla, how are you gonna get in? Oh. Kicking. Kicking is the answer. Her feet. Wow, her ride is busted up. Yep. And now we have our, our second character. Oh, yes. Player two. Candy Striper. Just your average girl next door. But behind her wholesome image lies a dark secret. 
Oh, Jasper. See, they never specify what her dark secret is. Is it because she dates the guy in the One wheelchair? Day. Is that is what it because she has like a, is like a a brace on her leg? Is like a thing against cripples? Night after night. Right, cool. I mean, thrills. She's. I wouldn't say she's your average <laughs> girl. <laughs> average in quotation. Yeah, and it's not really much of a secret. Here we go. I think Velma's got one more fantastic, or Varla has got one more fantastic line coming up here. I swear, I swear Caesar, Caesar, I'm gonna, I'm shove, gonna this shove this gun so far down your throat that I've gotta force my hand up your ass to pull the goddamn trigger. Oh. Yeah! Varla! Let's shoot some zombies. Your penchant for exaggeration is just charming. <laughs> wow. She's a sweetheart. <laughs> Sweetheart. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm going with. I like that you're wearing hey, the the, the shades. Only back. I had to I had to try to get in character here. So here you go. It's a light gun shooter. So guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna shoot some zombies with a light gun. And now our, our chat users have noticed something that I'm just now noticing here. Are you a lefty? I am a lefty. You are totally. Using I know. This I'm style. I'm a broken human. You know, you're just alternative. No. Oh, so you're maybe you're ambidextrous. As you may recall from the. Uh, from the Wii version of the game, you have like a little, I forget what these things are called. The Zombie, little, it's attacking it's you. A, yes. Sorry. Like the, the little, like the bullet hole through the bullet, it's not a magazine, because it's like the revolver clip or whatever. Uh-huh, clip. You, uh, you have it up there, and uh, as I score hits on zombies, it fills up with silver bullets. If I get a headshot, it'll slot in a gold bullet. Oh. And once I fill up the, uh, the entire rung there, I get like a big point bonus, and the game's like, extreme violence. Except you can't miss like you yes, did. Yes, if you miss, it, it like resets the. Uh, but you did shoot the, the money pile. I did get the money pile, and that's what counts. You can uh, you can you can get hung up on trying to get the other uh, point multipliers, and just or you let can... the zombies wail on you. But I prefer to just spam bullets, cause hey, what is? Because hey, you're just trying to survive here. I'm just trying to survive. You're just a buxom, I'm late, a buxom ill-dressed lady trying to make it in, in a the really apocalypse. really dirty strip club. <laughs> trying to just shoot some zombies. Now, you're doing it well, you're doing a good job. So I'm pretty much having to like force the game to auto reload me every single time. Why when I tested this game out on the controller, you could like press square to reload. Square? Yeah. But that seems like a square in this game. Oh, I guess switches. square. I was thinking select for some oh, reason. Because yeah. the button's actually weapons. square. So, but oh. it's like every single button on here switches Man, don't weapons. you know how to reload on the sharpshooter? I don't. You, you also, action. You're supposed to. Oh no, really? Oh no. Or does that switch to guns? No, it totally does reload. I oh, didn't even think of that. Oh man. Oh, sharpshooter. Oh, sharpshooter. I wish there was sharp. a shoot off camera to reload, Looks but that like is also not. Oh man, it's the pump action. You gotta pump action. I don't, good. I don't like that term. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a legitimate gun science term. I can understand why it would make you queasy in this environment. You also have a, uh, so I've got three blocks of health up there in my, my health block indicator. It doesn't seem like a lot. It's not a lot. I'll probably die here in a little you bit. You should go up there. Yeah. I, I totally am. Why would I not? This is not. Yeah, there oh. it is. Extreme violence. And he can, he says really, oh. Oh. I got stripper kick. <laughs> what the hell? There's no better description of what just happened to you. I'm going to switch back over to pistol for a little bit. Blap, blap, blap. So the extended uh, cut. This is a new episode for the extended cut. Yes, this is one of the uh, one of the two new episodes in the extended cut version. It's also obviously what? they upres some of the textures to make it look what pretty for the PlayStation. It does look kind of pretty. Yeah, those zombies are looking, you know, They're looking particularly definitely nasty. PlayStation appropriate. You can at also least. play it with a second player, as indicated down here, if you have friends. And that thing just kind of hangs out there. You pretty much, if you're gonna, yeah, if you're gonna be playing House of the Dead Overkill, which is just like so raunchy and over the top you need to have your buddies there because it's a party game it is definitely it definitely does seem like a, a social environment yes. kind of game yes. because you need someone else to wallow in the filth with <laughs> the you. absolute insanity of this those zombies game. are on fire zombies also, ain't got no good sense, varla and man. candy striper don't do it so much but when you're playing as a agent g the mysterious agent g mm -hmm. you may remember from other Yep, House and the, the foul mouth Isaiah Washington. And then, and then the foul mouth uh, Detective Washington. They just drop F bombs, pretty much. You can just follow the F bombs straight through the game. <laughs> it's a whole litany. Just a whole mess of them. Oh, these things. So, I didn't see them at first because I'm wearing these sunglasses. That was a good catch, though. But yeah, you uh, you shoot the little, oh, like, red, yeah. googly bits, and they will don't turn on the bullet time. Shoot the zombie. I guess we're talking like this now. Because bullet time affects okay. us as well. Okay, that was good. So yeah, you totally got that going for you. There's also, like, little trophies that you can shoot, and they will uh, unlock 
I don't know, 3D models and concept art and whatnot if you really just want to dive deeper into the world of House of the Dead Overkill. Maxwell, let me give you another reloading pro tip. All right. You sh it should reload as well if you slap the bottom of the of this thing right here. Oh, there's oh, there's like a little like you're slapping down. the clip in. Oh man, it's like I'm really there. It's like you're really outside the pink pussycat <laughs> besieged by zombies <laughs> wearing Saturday nothing but a bra and a glowing cloth. So I don't think there are any of these instances in this level, but in certain levels you get attacked by like these big super zombies, big muscular zombies, and you have to do we'll call it the game's version of a QTE to get them off of you. Basically. They get up on you, they're punching you in the face, and you uh, you have to shoot little bullseyes on their body and your character will swing back and, and, and knock them off of yourself. Okay. You can also stab them in the mouth with broomsticks sometimes. So you got hey that now. going for you too. You know, it's just, in, in a zombie apocalypse, it's important to be versatile. Dead, I'm not going to continue. But if I did, no, I think we're good. I could just cash in points. And keep oh, going. that's neat! It shows you the cost. So yeah, you can just keep, you can just soldier on if you want to. But if you're like going for the high score, I don't know why you would. You uh, wouldn't want to continue because you're going to lose. All yeah, your no way, no chance. All at your hard-earned points because you're a hard-working woman. Mm-hmm. At least in that level. Yeah, in that in that level in particular. Cool, Maxwell. Yeah. Uh, House of the Dead. Overkill extended cut. Yep. When's it coming out, you know? I do not because I didn't look at that part on the sheet. Nice. <laughs> Real nice. But I believe it is soonish. Soonish. It's like before the end of the year. We have that information on GameSpot.com yes, for you folks. Up. And uh, now we're going over to some more shooting, but more current. Uh, if you folks were watching the site earlier this week, you saw we threw this epic Battlefield 3 beta tournament yes. for early access. We had a tent set up and, and all this stuff. And it ran extra long. And it ran late into the night. It did. The competition was fierce. We're going to take a quick look at that a little later in the show, but for now, it's a starting block to give you tips on how to succeed in the Battlefield 3 beta. Hi, my name is Patrick Liu, I'm producer at DICE, and I'm going to give you a starting block, a couple of tips and tricks for the Battlefield 3 beta. In the Battlefield 3 beta, you're going to play a map called Operation Metro, which is an urban map, uh, and the game mode is Rush. If you see someone, if you have a flashlight uh, in the darkness, you can actually blind people by just aiming straight at them. Um, on the other hand, you know, if you're on the receiving end of the, that, you can just uh, shoot straight at that, and hopefully you'll hit someone. Uh, but you never know. Um, that said, also with, with support, if you pick the support class, um, you actually have something called suppression. So if you spray down the, uh, the subway, um, you're actually going to cover a, a pretty big area. And people running down that, you know, the, the bullets whizzing by their heads, they're going to be suppressed, like, and, and they can't aim as well, and they're going to see like a blurry vision. Um, so do that, uh, and it's going to help you a lot. It actually gives you points even. Some a feature that's been around for a while in Battlefield franchise is the spotting feature. So you press the spotting button, you, you spot enemies that, that's in your line of sight, and you actually tell your teammates where they are. So it's pretty helpful actually, you know, just, just telling people oh, there's someone here attacking or you know, you come here and help me and just tell people what's happening. Um, so that's extremely useful and it actually gives you points as well. If someone kills the guy that you spotted, you get points for that. Um, so if, if you have the laser sight, that actually has a similar uh, feature as the uh, flashlight, so you can blind people uh, on longer distance but with a narrow field of view. Yeah, I mean, again, if, uh, if you are being sniped at and, you know, you, you're trying to find that guy, there, there's actually one thing, when he's shooting, when he's about to shoot, there's a glint, uh, you know, from his scope. So look for that glint. So, uh, you know, after the first base, uh, and you get down to the subway, uh, it becomes kind of a bottleneck, and sometimes it can be pretty hard for attackers, but, you know, there are alternate routes, there are, you know, different entrances into the subway, so try looking for that. If, you, if you're pressing on and you can't, you know, pr progress, try to find an alternate route. Thank you very much for listening uh, into my tips and tricks, uh, and you'll be able to get hold of the whole game uh, on October 25th. And we're back, folks, and joining me is Sophia Tong here on the Big Red Couch. I know. When did this couch come in? It's been uh, a while since I've been in here. It was a couple weeks ago. Oh. I think we went, we, we went deskless. And then I started having to not wear the same pair of pants every day. Who's really going to know? Uh, yeah, seriously. Uh, users <laughs> are going to know now. And they, they take you to task. For, no, they Maybe don't care. see your shoes, maybe. Perhaps. Yay, I got shoes on. Sophia, uh, you're here, but you don't have any game system in hand. That's because we got data producer extraordinaire Eric Tay parked on the end of the couch 
with iPad? Yes, that is an iPad. And I actually touched one for the first time yesterday. It was very exciting. Welcome to the future. So Jan came up to me and was like, you like Gears of War, right? I'm like, sure. And you said yes. Yes. So apparently there's this new game called Shadow Gun, uh -huh. which is kind of like Gears of War. At least that's what the initial comparison is. And if you look okay. at the screenshot initially, you're like, okay, big, bald, beefy dude, cover shooter. Yep, moving from person. cover to cover. Kind of like Gears of War. But that's really the only similarities. They stop there. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Um, so Shadow Gun just came out yesterday for the iPad, mm -hmm. uh, 799 So the reason why Eric is helping me with this is because... You know, the touchpad controls is, is really bizarre because you're using your two thumbs like okay. you normally would. So, yeah, you use but one. you're like rubbing the screen and the iPad 2 is really light. Mm -hmm. So you're holding it and I'm not sure when you would be playing a shooter like in any kind of situation on a portable like, you wouldn't, console like that. You wouldn't like just be sitting down on BART, you know, you're commuting home, you're like, ah, oh, let me blow up some steam by shooting some guys. But there are bullets flying at you and you have to be pretty, like, so you're moving your left thumb just to move around and your right thumb. So there's a circle, you see the circle on the right, bottom right, like you press that to shoot, but uh -huh. you move your, if you don't, Thing is, as soon as you touch that circle, you start firing bullets, and you're very limited on bullets in this game. Oh, really? So you have to move your thumb outside of that circle to just point and aim okay. without firing. So then, so you're moving your thumbs. Like eventually, I find that my thumbs are like all over the screen. It's making a big mess. It's all <laughs> smeary and gross. Well, um, it's a new like dexterity challenge, right? It to is. play something on a tablet because. You know, controllers are molded ergonomically to fit to your hands. And right. as our handheld systems, they're gaming specific. Right. And, you know, computers, everyone now is familiar with, you know, where yeah. your hands are supposed to go. But this is kind of a new, a new input to be reaching, you know, people who have just picked up an iPad yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> earlier I this week. Yeah. I am not an iPad owner, but let's talk about the game. Okay. <laughs> so, so, Shadow Gun, it's a third person cover based shooter. It's set in the year 2350, and you play as this mercenary, John Slade. Yep, looks like it. Mr. Slade is getting uh So he's getting fed threatened. like AI. So there's like this AI banter between him and Sarah. It's an acronym. Okay. It's the AI counterpart. And you're the, supposed the enemy, you mean? Or it is no, it's, it's like his the like help. ally. It's like oh, okay. the Android help. So That's not how a download bar goes. <laughs> it's going backwards. <laughs> Eric, are we not downloading properly? What are you downloading? He's like, I don't know <laughs> what's happening right now. So you're in this fortress that this mad scientist has built and has all these like crazy creations and you're supposed to take him down. He's like some kind of crazy geneticist. So um, pretty standard storyline from okay. what I'm told. Sure. I had to play, Eric played more because he knew he was going to demo the game. So, but the thing is, the reason why a lot of people are excited for this one is because the graphics look really good. I mean, if you're looking at it now, it's like for an iPad game. Oh yeah. Really I mean, it's really imp it is it is really impressive. impressive visual fidelity. It Sometimes like, looks better than some of the <laughs> current gen. Yeah, games that we've at seen. very bright, very detailed. Yeah, so that's something that's new, and you know, but you know, graphics aren't everything. At least to me, it's it's cool that it looks nice. But um, so I see Eric is having hasn't died yet. That's, that's no, cool. he's doing well. Now he's to fight a guy who has apparently cloaking abilities. Uh, so. But yeah, it's interesting to see, you know, as we, as mobile gaming, or as tablet gaming becomes, you know, this stuff, stuff starts to become more widespread and more popular, it's really interesting to see what kind of, you know, visual fidelity people can yeah. come up with. and like people can be very creative with what they want to do, and I mean, I guess if shooters can work on, uh -oh. on this platform. Switch into the shotgun. So you do have other weapons, but I think at any given point, you can only have one. I don't think you can actually switch. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Eric. Vanquish that foe. Yeah, but from what I played, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, Eric can just shake his ha head if that's not the case. I mean, you're moving from one area to the next. Sure. Every now and then, there's like a hologram that shows like a gear which you interact with, which opens the next door. Or there's a little hacking mini game, which is basically symbols, and they blink, and you just type in, you just touch it in. So, so pretty basic in certain respects, but yeah, like pretty, yeah, straightforward. But it's still, pretty cool simple. thing to be I mean, playing it is on your eight bucks. But eight bucks, play it on your tablet. You know, show it, show it off because it's definitely. I feel like this, you know, that's sort of why we're showing it off here. It's because, yeah. like, hey, look at what this thing can do. This is pretty interesting. It's true. If you can afford an iPad too, if you can <laughs> afford, or you know, know somebody with one that Just you can totally bogart. One. But I'm so worried about dropping that thing too, because <laughs> you're moving your thumb. It's also <laughs> on the iPhone. Someone is asking from our community, and I don't compatible with 
iPhone 3GS, I believe, iPhone I, 4, I, iPod Touch. Third generation, iPod Touch, fourth generation, and iPad requires iOS 4.2 or later. Yeah. So you can totally play this, on, I play this on my iPhone, little styles. I don't know if it gets l even littler how uh, tinier. I mean, it's one it thing be. on the iPad screen, just big and pretty. Mm -hmm. I don't know about playing on the little teeny tiny, you know, I like my smartphone and all. I'm not an iPod, iPad, Apple user. You know, yeah, and it's also, it's definitely, you know, if you're trying to, like, we, you sort of make the initial comparison to Gears of War, but, right. you know, it's really, you know, like totally you said, different. that comparison can only go so far because, right. it, it, you know, the, the platform, the amount of time and money, the, the ambition, the scope of these games exactly. is wildly different. Yeah, and the cover deteriorates too in this one. Um, ammo is super limited, so you have to be pretty conservative with it. Like, I was kind of messing around in the beginning, and I ran out of ammo, and I really had no other choice but I to kill know. myself. It kind of sounds like you were really gun happy. Eric's got plenty of ammo here. He's also practiced. I made him practice <laughs> so he wouldn't look like a fool on the internet. Found grenade launcher. No, he's doing a great job. Let's see no, some grenade Let's launches. See some and other. Then, uh, is this the lobster ooh. boss? No, it's not the lobster boss. Lobster boss? Apparently there's a mechanized lobster boss. So let's see if Eric can make it there. Delightful. I don't know if he can, but. Blow him up. Oh, let's see. Did it just, okay, that sounded like a, like a car horn, but I guess it's a <laughs> turret. So you have to like break down that shield and then, uh, wow, it got really loud. Um. <laughs> yes, it did. Blow it up, Eric. Nice so work. Oh, there you go, more ammo. Uh, so. F Folks asking more about the format. Uh, is it on Android? Apparently, according to top researchers in the control room, the Android version will be released in October. Thanks, Takeshi. Man, I love this new setup that you guys have here. <laughs> yes, we totally planned for advanced. it and did not improvise it two minutes before the show started. <gasps> oh, is this the first time you guys have like yeah. people feeding you questions? No, I mean, you know, it's it's tough to like, you know, you don't want to tote oh, out a laptop here. Oh, There's no desk, desk to just, you know, put on. I mean, who puts a laptop actually on, on their, their lap? lap? It Come burns. On. That's just, that's, Battery heats that's up. preposterous. It's kind of uncomfortable. My thighs would get super warm. <laughs> it's not happening. Eric, shoot the switch. Where's the switch? I don't know. That glowing thing. You can't nope. shoot, no, you can't shoot the switch. All right, so that's Shadow Gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know where I'm going now. So that's a cool look. Thanks so, for bringing that by, Sophia. No problem. Uh, Thank for, you, Eric, for, for playing. And for recruiting Eric to, <laughs> to help us out with that, for sure. Um, folks, up next, we're going to be giving away some trivia prizes. And, and you're going to want to stay tuned because it's free games and it's free gear. I believe there are t-shirts involved. Ooh, free stuff. Who doesn't like free stuff? Delightful. Uh, but first, it's digital downloads. Aaron Sampson bringing you the latest on what's available for you to pipe into your home over the magic of the internet. Spotters. This is Aaron Sampson bringing you a list of top digital downloads this week on Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, and Wii Shop Channel. New this week on PlayStation Network, for $9.99, you can rush hard, which is what happens when you spend too much time in outer space mining ore and go on a side-scrolling low-gravity rampage. Rochard is a puzzle platformer set in outer space where the hero, actually named Rochard, must use his G-lifter to fend off some pretty evil dudes trying to get in on his asteroid business. There's a demo if you dare try. Then, releasing on the PlayStation 3 is Castlevania Harmony of Despair for $14.99. This title dropped on 360 in August of 2010 and merited a good 7.5 score for its challenging gameplay and great co-op. Harmony is a 2D side-scrolling addition to the classic Whippin franchise. Check out our review for more details. Also new this week is Worms Ultimate Mayhem for 1200 Microsoft points. The third dimension is back so you can enjoy worm murder from all sides. 80 single player missions and challenges and 4 player matches on Xbox Live over 5 multiplayer modes should keep those shotguns, baseball bats, sticks of TNT and holy hand grenades flowing. Old but newly available this week, this title's been around the block from Game Boy Advance to GameCube and now on the 3DS, it's The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Anniversary Edition. For the moment, the game's retailing for the price of free, so grab up to four friends and get your adventure on. On PSN, it's all about the finesse in Tiger Woods PGA Tour 12 for $59.99. Woods scored an 8.0 grade in March of this year, so let me do some mental calculations. Bloop, 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 bloop. Yep, it's still good. Highlights of Masters is The Masters, giving more focus to the game and career play, a useful caddy feature, and a good range of courses. Cons revolve around the title not significantly improving the franchise and questionable move controller accuracy. 
Then on XPL, do yourself a favor and pick up a great racing game with Blur for $39.99. Nominated in 2010 for Best Driving Game, Blur lets players travel the globe utilizing an armory of power-ups and includes multiplayer for up to 20 racers online and 4 players locally. Check out the video review on GameSpot, or even better, check out the Blur vs. YouTube mashup movie. Hilarious. Another great title this week involves Maximum Awesome. It's Crisis 2 for $39.99. Use stealth, armor, and firepower to stop an alien invasion of New York City, and also a bunch of mercenary dudes trying to get you out of your trousers so they can wear them. More in the good 7.5 range this week is Frontline's Fuel of War for $19.99. Start by playing the demo through OnLive on GameSpot and drive tanks, drones, and bots, plus call in airstrikes, or just put good old fashioned gun bullets down range as you capture control points and push the front line deeper into enemy territory. On XBL and PSN this week, in keeping with great horror titles from days of yore, it's Resident Evil Code Veronica X HD for $19.99. This title scored an Editor's Choice 9.0 back in 2001, which was still five years before the VHS tape died. Check out our vintage review on the game space. In game demos this week, grab your kids and put them in front of your Kinect for Sesame Street Once Upon a Monster, or just watch some entertaining trailers. In new DLC this week, arm up your Fallout New Vegas character on PSN with the Courier Stash for $1.99. And on XBL, you can also arm your Deus Ex character using the Explosive Mission Pack and Tactical Enhancement Pack. 240 and 160 Microsoft points respectively. In game trailers this week, you may enjoy on PSN, a Saints Row the Third, the Syndication trailer, and on XBL, a Burnout Crash Chicken Hoff trailer will blow your mind. Also check out a Rage Launch TV spot. That's all the time we have. Join us next week for our top picks of digital downloads. Thank you, Mr. Sampson. And folks, that brings us to trivia, trivia giveaways. We're giving away a couple things today. Uh, this shirt that Sophia is uh, holding up in front of her that would obviously be far, far too large for her. Uh, it's a large. It's a large. Yes, but American it's a nice apparel. American it's apparel nice. shirt. It's and got a that is uh, the Gaping Dragon boss from Dark Souls. It's really cool, actually. And it really kind of captures. I think it glows in the dark, actually. I'm really? looking at the back here. You, yeah? Yeah, and I'm holding it up. Does it feel a little green. glowy? Yeah. Okay, that's neat. Glowing dark. Uh, so that's actually the last giveaway we're going to be giving. The first one are codes to download The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings. That game came out earlier this year, rated, I believe, 8.5 by Kevin Van Ord. Excellent role playing <laughs> game. Uh, a lot of people really enjoying it. And we are giving away 10 codes for the game because this week version 2.0 came out. It's a patch update that adds in amongst a numerous small tweaks, an arena mode where Geralt, AKA the Witcher, gets to fight in gladiatorial combat to the death. So if you want to win a copy of The Witcher 2 to download, here's the question you need to ask, and forgive my pronunciation in advance. In The Witcher, the Scoia'tael are also known by another more easy to pronounce name. What is that name? Uh, Send us your answer to onthespot at gamespot.com in an email with your name. And uh, I guess you don't need your address for that one because it's a uh, it's code. Uh, send your answer that way or use the, use the answer trivia ask a question button on the side of the page. Secondly, we're going to be giving away more download codes for the Steam Indie Bundle. And this is a collection of indie games that includes World of Goo, Swords and Soldiers, Nyx Quest, Night Sky, and Bit Trip Runner. Sophia, do any you you know some of those games, right? Yes, Bit Trip Runner, really yeah. fun. If you played the Bit Trip series, this one's like the platforming running one. Actually, didn't you play? Just yeah, we had it on the show last week. Marco came on yeah. gamely. I like roped him in at the last second, and he's like, "I've never played a Bit Trip game before." And then he played him on the 3DS. Nice. Uh, but yeah, Runner's part of that. You, World of Goo is a lot of fun. Of a puzzle game. Nyx yeah. Quest, I remember, was a nice platformer. So. Mm -hmm. so some cool games in there. Each bundle code includes all these games to download on Steam and we're giving away four of them. If you want to win one, here's a question. It's pretty simple. What is the name of the protagonist in Bit Trip Runner? Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> don't, don't tell them. It's the Scoia'tael, sorry. <laughs> uh, so again, send those in via the email thing or the, the button thing. And finally, the t-shirts, which Sophia right. will once again model that are the t entirely obscuring big. her torso. Uh, for a Dark Souls t-shirt, we have a whole box of these. Here's the question you're going to need to answer. In Dark Souls, you can touch blood stains that appear on the ground. 
What does doing so reveal to you? So you see a blood stain on the ground, you touch it, what happens? And what is the significance of that event? Your hands get sticky. You know, I think you can maybe just kind of toe it oh, okay, with a just boot. Like poke at I it. feel like, oh. yeah, it, I think wearing gloves is just sort of part of what Dark Souls is all about. But then again, earlier, Kevin, he was, walk, he was rocking that robe, totally had bare feet. Gross. No, yeah. insanitary. Ugh. That's how you get poisoned, not from the <laughs> mutant rats biting you. That also poisons you. Oh, I see. Cool. I missed that segment. That's the trivia stuff for you folks. So totally try to win that stuff. And hey, maybe you will. That'd be cool. Um, that's bringing us to the end of our show. We mentioned before that we had a Battlefield 3 tournament earlier this week, and though it made a lot of folks in the studio here have to stay very, very late at work, it was a lot of fun. Four teams faced off on the Metro map that is available in the beta, and we got some highlight reels up on the site as well as full coverage of each round. So if you're craving that Battlefield 3, uh, take a look at those videos because there's a whole bunch up there, very distilled very well, and uh, also featuring Kevin Van Ord hosting the whole event from this very red couch set. <laughs> uh, we also have a couple cool previews. The new Syndicate game, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, and on Monday, a huge preview for Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Uh, that's going up from an event earlier this week. So, hey, there you go. That'll be fun. I uh, hope you folks have a great weekend. Thank you for joining us here on On The Spot. We'll be back next week. Live and on the spot. And uh, for everyone here, I'm Chris Waters. I'm Sophia Tong. Saying have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us.